Adobe Flash Zero Day Vulnerability, no more private registration, what? And T-Mobile Transparency Report is released. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Hola, I'm Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for July 8, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. First off, a toast to the patrons for your support. We are still pretty far from one of our very first goals, so please share this show on all of your social networks. To the news! First off, we have Adobe. So Patrick informed us of the hacking team breach earlier this week, and it seems to be getting worse as the days go by. After the hundreds of gigs of data was stolen and released into the wild, researchers have started reading through all of the information to see what's up. Most notably today is a zero-day vulnerability in Adobe Flash and some code targeting Microsoft Windows and SE Linux. The really fun part is the new vulnerability attacks the newest and latest version of Flash ending in .194 and it can work against IE users as well. So, you know, don't use IE. The Flash bug allows code to be executed remotely by an attacker and according to Adobe, a patch should be released this week but was not issued at the time of recording. So just a reminder, just, you know, disable Flash forever. Now, just install it for good. The Windows vulnerability is reported to be in the kernel or the brain of the computer, as I like to explain to my grandparents. It also allows an attacker to get an escalation of privileges. The problem in SE Linux may also work on Android phones, which also use Linux code to work. And to top it off, we also learned that the FBI purchased some of Hacking Team's spying products, specifically one called RCS for short, which infects a computer and lets the attacker listen to communications before they are encrypted, including emails, instant messages, passwords, Skype calls, etc., etc. In total, it's reported that the FBI has spent $775,000 on hacking team and other clients included include the DOD and the DEA. <laughs> yeah. So since the breach just happened a few days ago, there is so much more information that you know researchers have to work through. So we may find even more vulnerabilities in the next coming weeks. Have you ever signed up for a website? You probably have, especially if you run a business, and when you do, you have to fill out the who is information for your domain. That includes your name, your address, phone, email, etc., etc., and this gives people a really easy way to contact you if anything happens to your website. But it can also create a serious problem with harassment. So if you take off a customer, they could release your address to the entire internet, and then anybody could dox you even further. Luckily, there are things like privacy and proxy registration services, which use a privacy company address and info on the WHOIS database instead of your personal information. For example, Hack5 does this. Well, now a proposal that ICANN is looking at may change that, though. The proposal could limit privacy and proxy registration services that are available to any site deemed not commercial and transactional. Unfortunately, no one can really lobby against this new policy unless they work inside of ICANN. A few ICANN folks have, in a document labeled the Initial Report on the Privacy and Proxy Services Accreditation Issues Policy Development Process. <sighs> But the ICANN's official vote is yet to be determined. I'm gonna keep a close eye on this one. And last off, we have T-Mobile, one of the largest wireless carriers in the US, which just so happens they turned over a ton of data to the government, more so than any other large carriers. They handled 177,549 subpoenas, 17,316 warrants, and over 3,000 wiretap orders in 2014, just 2014, but they actually received over 350,000 requests from the government. So T-Mobile recently released their first ever transparency report this year, which shared the information with the public. That's a lot of data that the government agencies really want to see. It's kind of creepy. I don't have any featured comments today, but comment below, guys. It's really important. I really want to know what you guys think about all the different stories. But I did want to take a moment to remind you guys that we all have a Google Plus community dedicated to sharing news about what's happening in security and privacy. And we may even use some of those stories for the show and give you props there, too. So simply search for ThreatWire in the community section of Google Plus to find us. And before we leave, again, big thanks to our patrons over at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. If you find value from this and you can spare a few quarters or a few cents an episode, even a quarter a month, which actually ends up being about two cents per episode. It's not much. Consider becoming a patron via the link right below, right there. Just click on that little square. And we may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in our next episode because they are so kawaii. 
I really like Grendel. I'm, I'm feeling Grendel. Very, very cute. Similar to my little Luna. <laughs> so we're almost to our very first goal. So I really hope that you'll contribute to help keep us the show coming completely independent, completely ad-free. And by the way, why are we ad-free? It'd be a little awkward if we were sponsored by a company who ended up getting hacked, because then we'd have to talk about it on the show. <laughs> now, if you can't donate, a like, a share, a subscribe, all that stuff goes a long way too, and you can find all the things at threatwire.net. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse. I will see you and you and you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.